Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to this sealed deck building video. This was recorded during the streamer event for Wilds of Eldraine where I got to preview the new set ahead of the release next week. It is possible to open more than 6 rares since some of the cards from the Enchanting Tales which appear in every pack could also be rare or mythic like this Karmic Justice. But uh, yeah, blue black is looking solid. Got a likeness looter, draw discard, turn into other creatures. Journey, excellent if we've got a few adventures ourselves which can also enable it. And then Talion as a powerful card draw slash win condition. Twining Twins, also great as just a 4-4 Flying Vigilance Ward one. And uh, even the Vendor can be a bomb if you can play it early. So let's have a look. Go color by color, perhaps. And I'll give you my quick two cents on some of the cards. So what are the standout cards in white? The top row is all pretty mediocre, unless we have some tap synergy. We've got the Light Blades, good in a more controlling deck. Vendor, of course, can be a bomb, just making a ton of extra power and toughness through the Sorcerer roll tokens. And the extra card selection is great. Even if we put a roll token on a creature that already has a roll token, this can still potentially enable some synergies that want enchantments to go to the graveyard, which Vendor can enable if you put a roll on a creature that already has a roll under your control. Next up... Double Celebrant can maybe pick things up if we end up with a few Prophetic Prisms or other nice ETB effects. And then a Reindeer can also work nicely in maybe a blue-white tap deck. And even the Guide, I guess, with Celebration can be quite powerful as a 3-3 Flying Lifelink. So white seems okay, but definitely has a few holes that we need to fill. Let's take a look at blue. We've got a Cantrip and Sleight of Hand, always fine. Double Sprite, especially good in the blue-white tap synergy deck, but also has a bit of overlapping synergy with blue-black fairies. We've got a couple counter spells. Spell Stutter also good in the fairy deck. Ice Out can be 3 or 2 mana if we bargain. A few filler cards. Quick Study can also be nice alongside those counter spells. And then Double Stopgap. Galvanic Giant, more late game cards. Attendance. Dragon, all good cards as well. And Double Gatekeeper gives us an early adventure and then later in the game a 6-5. And then Journey, so blue looks okay. Definitely have a few fairies for the fairy deck. Let's take a look at black. Ego Drain could be fine with enough fairies to enable it. Cell Sword, good in red-black. Although could technically just play it for the creature half. Double Candy Grapple is exciting if we have ways to enable Bargain, but even without Bargain is great. And then Back for Seconds, another great card with Bargain. We've got a Grim Search. Even Tutelage I could consider playing if my curve is somewhat low and if we have enough Bargain cards to sacrifice it when our life total starts getting low. Dream Spoilers times two. Yeah, with enough instants could also be fine. And then Scream Puff as a curve topper. So I could definitely see Blue Black working out, since we have a couple multicolor cards as well that we know about. Red can be somewhat aggressive. We've got Double Battle Garb for the Celebration deck, Guests as well as Godric. So some good Celebration payoffs, but Red's not very deep. Don't have a ton of red cards total. Catapult more of a blue red card as opposed to an aggressive Celebration card. In green we've got a Utopia Sprawl, which is awesome. One mana acceleration is difficult to get, especially in limited. We've got some removal. Tough Cookie is great in any deck, especially if we've got some more food synergy. Double Welcome to Sweet Tooth for extra food tokens and other counters and tokens. And uh, Werefox, all the adventure creatures are usually great. This is no exception. Got the Gale Fang, great alongside those adventure creatures. Vanguard as another curve topper. Just can be weak to some of the cursed rolls if they turn it into a 1-1. And then double Glutton. 
So even green has some solid options. So this is not going to be easy to build since there's a lot of uh, viable colors. But blue-black seems like the starting point. And then Prophetic Prism is also going to be useful for a bargain synergy. So red seems least likely to make it. White maybe as a splash for like a spellbook vendor. But um, yeah, I don't think white's going to be quite good enough. So I'll try laying out blue-black and then we can also take a look at maybe a three-color pile. Uh, if we end up playing maybe black green splash blue or blue green splash black if we're just interested in some candy grapples for instance since in uh, some of these rares we could just splash either one of those colors and still play green could also work out so let's uh, put all the playable blue cards on one side I don't think alchemist is gonna be quite good enough here Also not quite sure about Succumb, since we're not a very aggressive deck, which is where this shines. Not a fan of the Visitor. Maybe play Dark Tutelage, but that one's kind of sketchy. Let's say one Scream Puff. Collector's Vault can also be playable, especially for trying to ramp and if we can maybe fix our colors with the treasure token. Don't think that's going to be the case in straight up blue black. So this is just blue black. Bit light on two mana creatures, perhaps. How many fairies do we have total? Eight. Definitely enough to enable Ego Drain and cards like Spell Stutter. Don't know if we have enough instant speed plays for Dream Spoilers. Six instants. Don't think we have any Flash creatures either. And I guess this is an instant as well. But yeah, we're pretty low on um, ways to enable Dream Spoilers, and once we cut Dream Spoilers, of course, we'll have fewer fairies. A little bit of light on ways to enable Bargain. There's a Prophetic Prism, but that's about it. So blue-black has a few glaring issues. So I think green might work its way into the equation. Do have a gatekeeper we could also adventure early. But uh, let's just put all the green cards in this pile and then maybe we'll get a better sense of what color to splash, if any. So treatment I wouldn't mind if green's our primary color. Probably need green to be our primary color if we're going to play Utopia Sprawl, since it's not very useful on the splash. Tough cookie is great. Double Welcome to Sweet Tooth, also a good bargain enabler. Don't think we'll have enough four power creatures for Uprising, but we can always double check later. Werefox, Galefang, Vanguard, Double Glutton. So looking at this, I'm kind of thinking blue-green splash black might be the way to go can be a somewhat deep splash since we'll have Utopia Sprawl, Return from the Wilds, Prophetic Prism at the very least as mana fixing and with some extra card draw we should be able to make that work. So then cut Ego Drain, don't need Dream Spoilers as much. I don't think we're dark tutelaging since revealing a glutton's gonna hurt. Don't need scream puff. So we would be splashing black for grapple. Maybe looter. Talion seems worth it. And then some of these black bargain cards at three mana. That seems like 
a reasonable number of cards to potentially splash, but could easily cut one or two of those. Let's take a look at the remaining blue-green cards, because I'm sure some of them aren't all that great. Sprites especially seems cuttable if we're not going for the fairy theme. Don't have a lot of synergy with small flying creatures. The counter spells we also don't have to play since our deck's mostly going to be operating at sorcery speed. Although counter spells can be nice to have and sealed when the opponents are going to be playing most of their bombs. Takedown seems good, stuff cookies staying, double welcome. Don't mind the gatekeeper giving us some more late game plays. Mm, genealogists take it or leave it. Coral Smith also not particularly exciting. See, th these are both maybes. And I guess the counter spells are as well. But everything else I'm pretty happy with. Don't need to play Slide of Hand since we don't have a lot of instant and sorcery synergies, which make them better. Galvanic Giants, if we cast it for 4 mana, can keep creatures tapped down if we cast expensive spells. Do have a decent amount of ways to enable it. And then if we cast a 7 mana adventure, that's a lot of card advantage, so don't mind it. Stopgap, also good with Welcome to Sweet Tooth to enable bargain. So possible I don't need some of these black bargain cards when we have double stopgap. Twining Twins also gets better with Prophetic Prism to maybe use the adventure first, but totally fine just as a 4-drop. I like the attendance, especially good in blue-green where you can put those large green creatures to use if the opponent tries to double block them. Bit heavy on the expensive cards perhaps, but sealed tends to be a bit slower so we'll have more time to get to 6 and 7 mana. Okay, so 51 cards need to make 11 cuts, so let's say we cut all of those including all the counter spells, which may or may not be a mistake. Then I would like to keep Talion. Double Candy Grapple seems worth having. And do we keep the Likeness Looter? I'm not consistently gonna be able to cast this on turn 2, which is where we would like to cast it. So this one might be a bit weaker on the splash. Still good, of course, if we can deploy it early. But it is still a 1-1, there's a few ways to punish one toughness in the set. And then maybe don't need Grim Search as much. Back for seconds does seem pretty powerful when we have some good 4 mana creatures to put back on the battlefield right away. And then stop gap can sometimes be cheaper than 4 mana. Alright, so this is kind of my first revision. So currently splashing 4 black cards off of, let's say, I'm not sure if two or three swamps. Probably need an extra forest for Utopia Sprawl. So let's say two swamps, Prism, Return from the Wilds, and then uh, Utopia Sprawl can also fix for black. So that's three ways to make black mana in addition to our swamps, so that's kind of like having five black sources, which I think is okay for four black cards, would like maybe one extra black source. But I don't think we have any other great mana fixing options. I guess we could play Collector's Vault to make treasures, but that's kind of slow to get going. Alright, and then... Yeah, need to make four cuts. Do I need a Royal Treatment? It is quite good with some of our expensive creatures. Glutton also gets better with all the tokens from Welcome to Sweet Tooth. So this is more of a 5-drop actually with Bargain. Makes our curve look better. Gilfang looks okay, got quite a few adventures. Possible I don't need double stop gap. Maybe just play one. Galvanic Giant. It is good with double Hamlet Glutton as well. 
So kind of like it. I guess we don't have a lot of enchanted creatures for takedown. It is still a 2 mana sorcery speed, kind of a bite effect. So it seems okay. Possible I don't need double gatekeeper, but it does give us some cheap interaction as well. Possible royal treatment is difficult to fit in here. I do have some other tricks up my sleeve with the Werefox. We've got the attendance to shrink stuff down, so treatment may not be as necessary. Okay, two more cuts, we're almost there. Think I'm still happy with 17 lands. So now it's mostly about looking at our curve. Journey is also more of a 4-drop, don't expect to play this on turn 2 very often. Can cast it for x equals 1 at 4 mana or x equals 2 at 6. So I might have a few too many 4 slash too many 6 mana cards. Uh, what do we think of Archive Dragon? It is pretty solid. Can scry lands to the bottom. Vanguard may not be needed. It does give us a disenchant. But the 6 mana creature can be a little clunky. Same can be said for Gatekeeper, but at least the Adventurer is more likely to impact the board. Um, yeah, this is tough. Do have a bit of a gap at 3 mana, but the Adventurers can help. Double blue on Twining Twins and Journey can be a little tough, but again the mana fixing can help there too. Just going over the entire pool one more time to make sure we didn't miss any amazing cards. So Vendor is one of the main ones I'm leaving out that I'm a little sad about. I think we're fine without the counter spells. We've got a lot of heavy hitters ourselves. Garrick's Uprising could certainly have its moments, but some of our top end cards already have Trample. Still good with like a Gatekeeper for instance, but that's okay. Alright. So two last cuts. In terms of removal, we've got takedown, double candy grapple, couple bound spells with journey, gatekeeper, stopgap. Maybe I just cut another stopgap, since journey is probably the better bounce effect. And I don't have that many ways to enable bargain, probably want to keep those bargain enablers for Hamlet Glutton. So let's cut another stopgap. And then keeping the uh, Vanguard to potentially destroy some cursed rolls could also be important if they try and shrink down the Glutton. Could maybe cut one Candy Grapple, reducing my Black Splash even further. That way if I'm without Black Mana it's not a disaster. Alright, this seems okay. Could also cut back for seconds and keep double Candy Grapple. Although our deck is maybe a little bit light on card draw. So this kind of functions as a nice 2 for 1, although not something I'll play on turn 3. So if we take a look at our realistic curve, Utopia Sprawl I can cast on turn 1, Grapple not so much. Same with Takedown, Gatekeeper I might adventure on turn 2. So not an actual 3-drop. These are more realistic on 4-mana. Attendance I might adventure sooner at some point. So this is kind of our more realistic curve. So yeah, I'd still have a bit of a crowded 4-drop slot. Or I can just cut back for seconds. Although this is 40 cards. No, I think we'll keep this. Okay, 8 to 7. Fix my basic lands real quick. Alright, then so we can finally jump into some games and see how the deck does. And looks good. Turn to Cookie. Maybe bounce on 3. So we already have a food token for the final chapter. So now we can make a proactive play if our opponent doesn't present a target for entry denied. Opponent's red-white. 
and it's going to be a trainee. Okay, um, could send that packing, attack for two. I think I prefer getting the Sweet Tooth going here. And then don't want to trade since we can maybe use the ability later. Alright, that bumps up the trainee. Take four. Could make another food token here to get a ton of extra counters. Just have to watch out for removal on the creature we're targeting. But this can get our black mana sorted. And then we can set up a journey for X equals two. Don't mind that. Could also make another 1-1. One, one. But this seems okay. No attacks. So we're taking a bit of a beating, but that's because I think my creatures are better than the opponents. At least once we get to the late game. So I want to avoid trading. And we can always gain some life back with our food tokens. Okay, final chapter. So they could easily have some instant speed removal here. If they flick a coin, that's a reason not to target our human and target our tough cookie instead. They could have some other removal, but there's not a ton of instant speed burn that would deal two damage. I guess there is the three mana deal two plus whatever instants and sorceries in graveyard. Although I'm not sure if a red white would be playing that. And there's the one mana burn spell as well, of course. I think we target the cookie just to play around flick a coin. All right, did a witch stalker frenzy. That's too bad. So now we don't get any plus one counters. Can of course just cast Vanguard. Can send the opponent's adventures packing with Journey. I'll just play Vanguard and hit for one. And Merry Bards gives a young hero a role to the trainee. Okay, so is it time for Journey, bouncing some creatures, or do we play Gatekeeper first? Could also use the Adventure to bounce something, such as the trainee. Yeah, maybe I just um, hit for six, play Gatekeeper. Shouldn't be dead on the way back, and then we can start bouncing with Journey. Seems reasonable to me. Just want a bit of added pressure in play before bouncing. If we draw land, we can bounce three things. And hope Gatekeeper can hold off an attack. They already used their five damage frenzy earlier. All right, so they've got some sort of pump spell. Maybe a plus two or a two damage effect. Uh, I think I'll take it. Even with double strike, we're not dead. But they can certainly get us pretty low here. All right, plus two, so that's eight total. Yeah, if they also had the double strike uh, adventure, we would have been dead. But now our opponent should be dead. Send those two packing. And attack for 13 exactly. All right, sweet. So they punished our cookie, but uh, got our sweet revenge. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, our hand's definitely on the slow side. But Prism can enable Bargain on Glutton. So if we find a 3-drop, we'll be fine. This also fixes our colors in the meantime. We've got a nice 4, 5, 6 curve. Ooh. Can do this at instant speed. Oh, never mind. It's only non-token creature. I take that back. Can bounce our artifact with it. 
So if we're in the end step, then it's gonna come back in our end step. Because now I could play Gale Fang with haste. Is a reason to put that card in adventure. Utopia Sprawl, okay. Yeah, so if we name green, then we'll still have four mana. Play Gale Fang and Smash. Or we could just play the twins, but then Gale Fang won't have haste later. I guess we mistimed the uh, adventure, but that's fine. So Lookout can draw the opponent some extra cards here. If they have some aura rolls to enchant their creatures with. And Guide is next. Okay, so I have five mana. Could play Glutton Sacrificing Prophetic Prism, but then we lose our black mana fixing. Don't really want to attack with Gale Fang. So maybe I get the Giant going for four mana, so I can tamp opposing stuff down when curving out. Even though this would be better if I have an extra mana to play alongside Welcome to Sweet Tooth. So I could also just play Twins and pass. What if I just attack? Does their opponent block? They might. They don't. That works, I guess. Can block the guide now. And then we'll see if we want to wait on the 7 mana adventure. Maybe just play Archive Dragon next turn if we draw land. Okay, opponent does get to draw a card now and enable Celebration. But this one only enchants itself, so they couldn't put it on the guide. Okay, and we found a land, so now we have six mana total. Attack with Gale Fang and Twins. Play Archive Dragon, seems like the more straightforward line. Could also go with four mana Giant, two mana Sweet Tooth, and then next turn tap stuff down. Which is also reasonable, although we're probably just going to take over with our large flyers here. Don't even know if it's worth it to attack with Gale Fang at this point. Probably just send a flyer. And uh, yeah, those are good. Probably don't need quick study. Another Glutton could always sacrifice Utopia Sprawl once we're done with it. Opponent needs to gain some life here. And now they're just going to be chumping our flyers. They both have ward, so maybe a pump spell can still save them. Okay, a reach on the sage isn't bad. So kill the guide. Opponent takes four down to four. And then maybe I just play four mana giants alongside Welcome to Sweet Tooth. And both options are reasonable. But now with Sweet Tooth it's going to be easier to bargain multiple times. So if they present a flyer we can tap it down. They can tap down our flyer with guard but that's their entire turn gone. So that seems fine. Three, four, five, six, seven, so can cast it without bargain now. Tap down, let's say, keep guard so they can jump with it. Or maybe a 3-3 three, three still. So that my 4-4 four, four can attack on the ground. And so this is getting chumped. So if I attack like this, chump, eat this, go to one, seems fine. Facing a 6 6 trample. The next turn we get some uh, plus one counters as well. And yeah, that's just too much pressure. Awesome. On the play, and yeah, our hand seems fine. 
Turn two, Sweet Tooth. Turn three, return and get our black mana for our black splash. And then Glutton has plenty of tokens to sacrifice. Found our black mana anyways, so I guess we'll get double blue next turn. Impact Tremors, all right, our opponent's serious about making tokens, probably. So return and get an island, and food token will give me an extra counter, so that might be better than an extra 1-1. One, one. And then I'll have plenty of things to sacrifice to bargain. Utopia Sprawl, enchanting a forest, so at least it doesn't make extra mana this turn. But it will make blue mana next turn. Get a nice 4-4 four, four here. Not messing around. Now we do have to worry about a counter spell. Pun could have a spell stutter. But I think we still go for it. Apply maximum pressure here. And that resolves. So we're super far ahead on board. Okay, and next up we could bounce the Gutsy Explorer. Still draw with Quick Study. I guess uh, we'll start by bouncing to play around Spell Stutter, although they didn't have one last turn. That works. Tank for 10. And then we can draw two now or during the opponent's turn. Don't think it matters. Gatekeeper bounces my token. That's nice. Still facing a glutton. And Agatha. I don't think it's going to be enough. All right, turn our giant sideways, and that should be game. And does indeed have trample. All right, sweet. On the play, and uh, yeah, double sweet tooth is tempting. Although we don't have blue mana for a quick study, so that could be a little bit of a concern. Although the strength of double sweet tooth to start out might be good enough to keep. Opponent on an aggressive blue-red deck. At least we hit our land drop for the turn. Take two. And a battle mouse. Alright, so first make a food, then get plus one counters. So we get one more, and we found our blue mana, so that's excellent. So can attack with both, and then, yeah, I guess play Gale Fang's not going to have haste. Could also draw two with quick study, but Gale Fang seems fine. Still a 4-4 Vigilance. Battle Mouse does complicate matters a little bit, and a Frenzy is just going to take out our 4-4 to enable an attack. Still a race we're winning at the moment. One land away from Glutton. And yeah, let's get even more counters. So that's two 4-4s four just from double Welcome to Sweet Tooth to start out. That's pretty crazy. So let's quick study. I don't think it matters too much how we tap our mana. 
Maybe you leave a black, since I could draw Candy Grapple plus a land. Tank for eight. And I can sack a food token to bargain next turn. Or maybe one to just gain three life. It's going to be a bruiser on defense, most likely. Which is a little sad. So no need to sack food for life. And we've got a couple of options. Including bouncing two creatures with journey, which is probably good enough here. Can bounce Bruiser for sure, and then probably guess so they're forced to jump with the mouse so they can't easily double spell while we have them on the ropes. If our opponent will replay these, we get to draw a card. Yeah, this uh, two mana saga does a lot of work, easy to underestimate. Opponent with Godric gets to have a small party, but now back to reality where they're gonna have to double chum block. Don't think I can do anything else here. Yeah, that's a sad way to go. There's no real sweepers I'm afraid of in these colors either. So just play a giant and then I don't even have to sacrifice to bargain. I can just cast it for seven mana. Yeah, I would say this hand worked out. It was a little sketchy to start out, but yeah, the strength of double Saga was good enough. A boatload of waffles. I like your username. Let me know if you're ever in the neighborhood. Alright, on the play, and who turn one Utopia Sprawl, sign me up. Get to see Talion in action. So this will name Black. Although we also have Prophetic Prism for mana fixing, so we've got it all. So next turn play Talion, I guess tough cookie for now. Could also Prism to then set up Journey after we play Talion. But this can maybe get some damage in in the meantime. Put onto red white. So what number do we name? Two is kind of a safe bet. Yeah, they could have some three or four mana removal as well. It's just that most creatures have either two power or toughness, at least in the red white deck. And then I don't think I want to trade for the Armory Mice. I guess they could attack and have Witch Stalker Frenzy for three mana. That would be the worst case scenario. That point's gonna pump the mice, so now we'll just kill it with a candy grapple. Okay, so we've got mana for Prism plus Candy Grapple. Have to be a bit mindful of that Witch Talker Frenzy I was talking about, although I imagine if they had it, they would have uh, just killed Talion first chance they got. Could also bounce the Armory Mice instead of killing it, which is also reasonable. Because if they replay it, we'll get to drain them with Talion. So if I want to play around Witch Docker Frenzy, I, I just attack with Talion here. So we only have one attacking creature and they only get a one mana discount. Probably overkill, but since we're so far ahead, I think we can afford to. Opponent passes without doing anything. Well, what's the plan? Activate Tough Cookie, play Sweet Tooth, I guess. If they have Witch Docker Frenzy, they have Witch Docker Frenzy. Alright, Firebolt kills Cookie. That's fine. Smack him for seven. Yeah, playing turn one Utopia Sprawl, turn three Talion doesn't seem very fair. Acolytes triggers Talion, has two power or toughness. Bones at eight. 
Another welcome to Sweet Tooth. Oh boy. Prism fixes our double blue. Can play Gatekeeper if we'd like. But how about another Sweet Tooth? And then just Candy Grapple Acolyte attack for four. Could play Journey for zero just so we draw one playing Gatekeeper. But yeah, this game seems over. Opponent found an answer to Italian, but it's too little too late. Already dealt a lot of damage and drew some extra cards. And then now we'll get the extra plus one counters. Gale Fang also has haste. So yeah, this game's very much over. Awesome. Okay, hand seems reasonable. Turn three, return from the wilds. Get our black mana most likely. Can always absorb a bit of damage with our adventure. Hope they present something we can blow up with our bear down. So play turn one forest in case we top deck Utopia Sprawl. Candy Grapple, so we'll be able to cast that thanks to the black mana from return. Assuming it resolves. So we've got some fun adventure cards coming up. And then between a food token and a 1-1, one -one, probably leaning 1-1 one -one right now. Even though food token is less likely to die to an opposing burn spell. Opponent with a familiar in blue-white. Okay. So definitely get a land. Yeah, maybe food token's still the way to go. It's just a safer investment. And then next turn with five mana. Could just play a three four flyer. Okay, the guide's kinda scary. Missing double blue for journey. Yeah, I think we just play three four flyer. Hope it doesn't get removed. But uh something like the 4 mana red sorcery could deal 4 damage and take it out. Knightly Valor instead, alright. Now a 5-5. Five, five. A lifelink flying hits pretty hard. Although we can destroy the enchantments with bear down. Could also just take out the guide altogether with candy grapple if we sack the food token. So we've got a few options. Can also cast Vanguard without going through the adventure first. Yeah, maybe just kill a Knightly Valor, keep up Candy Grapple. Or we can play this for 4 mana. And then destroy the enchantments, kind of like that as well. That way the attendants can still block. And next turn if we play Vanguard we'll be able to tap something down with a Giant's ability. Grasp of Fates, Exiles our Giant, and Duel shrinks down our attendance. Pumps Guide, so that was a nice turn for them. I'll just take the hits. Gatekeeper, not quite what we want here. This is exiled until we remove the enchantment, which we used our disenchant already. Bouncing the tokens, of course, good value. And then I can Candy Grapple kill the guide. And I should probably main phase take it out. Could also just play Vanguard, which blanks the knight, but the flyers are a bit of a problem, so we need to deal with at least one of them here. Could also bounce one of the flyers, but then the knight will hit us. Close call between the two since they may have a hard time enabling celebration from now on. And I don't think I'm trumping. Might end up sacking a food token to gain three. I guess trumping means it goes to the graveyard where I can get it back with back for seconds, but wouldn't be able to put it in play for free either. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's just gain three. Found another swamp. Not quite what I need. Island would be slightly better here. So let's see if our creature resolves first. And does. To chump or not to chump. Opponent's at 27, so we've got a long way to go. But I might end up exiling my own attendants with the journey if I draw an island, so let's try this approach. Could also bounce the Vanguard to destroy Grasp of Fates. Although that might take too long to redeploy. And down to five we go. It is possible our opponent's got a sweeper in hand. Although then they could have taken out Vanguard and pumped Familiar. Nope, just their own Gatekeeper. Okay, so I probably attack with Vanguard and then play my own Gatekeeper, prepare to chump with the Attendants. Could also quick study and try and dig towards an extra blue source, but one land is not enough to play my 6-drop afterwards. So I don't think that's the right call. And I would like to get this attack in. Alright, Island of the Top would be very much appreciated. Could be that to a combination of spells. Bodyguard's a good one. Exile Gatekeeper. I have to chump. Okay, there's our blue source. So we can cast it for X equals 3. So it could bounce all three of the opponent's creatures, get back Gatekeeper, and then I guess attack. Make sure this resolves, although if it doesn't, I'm probably just dead. Don't think it's realistic to play around Spell Stutter, although I could. There's also a world where I want to bounce my own Vanguard to then replay the adventure, destroy Grasp of Fate, but that seems a bit convoluted. Alright, that resolves. Send those packing. And I guess we get to draw by getting back our creature from exile that was exiled by bodyguard instantly, so that's pretty sweet. Hit for six. And yeah, we might have turned a corner, although we're still at a precarious three life. And our opponent can replay bodyguard. Deals one down to two. And an Archive Dragon, yeah, that's threatening lethal here. Okay, that's a removal spell. So you're saying there's a chance. Can quick study first as well. Also have the option of getting back our attendance to just shrink a creature down. So we've got a couple options available. But starting with quick study seems fine. Galefang. Okay, so... Take down, have to pay the ward. Hit for 12. So do I have the mana for back for seconds, get back attendance, use the adventure, and then yeah, still cast a hasty gale fang. That could be the play. So our opponent can replay multiple creatures here, goes for familiar, we get to draw. And then flash and bodyguard, exile vanguard. Okay, Utopia Sprawl doesn't really matter. So yeah, the plan is back for seconds. Get back Attendance. And then, yeah, take it from there. Could also save the adventure to shrink down the familiar if it goes to attack. 
But now I can force him to double trump, which seems better. This now has haste. Could also play Utopia Sprawl first, I suppose. Name green. And smash. Also get to draw off uh, my creature coming back from exile. And unless they have a burn spell, we should have it. Attendance, 3-4 flyer, not good enough. And yeah, give it plus one plus one. Sweet, so very close one here against the Jeskai deck. Picked up Talion on the last turn. What do we name? Sweet. All right, we're on the play with uh, fine hands, missing black for candy grapple, but the adventure enables a hasty gale fang, and a turn to welcome to sweet tooth is always nice. All right, turn one forest. Hope they present the target here. A red green. And they're gonna destroy my enchantments, not what we were hoping for. This is sorcery speed, so I won't get to curve into a hasty Gale Fang now. Okay. I guess I can bounce, play Prism. Or I can play Gale Fang, planning to bounce the Outrider next turn. Prism also sets up Candy Grapple to kill it, so we've got a few ways to potentially deal with it. What's the upside of playing Gilfang now? Yeah, I guess we'll just bounce. Play Prism. Should start with Prism. That way I get to attack for one. Still don't want to attack into a 4-2 with Gale Fang, but they might play something else. Nope, it's just Outrider again. So kind of unfortunate for us in a way. So just play Gale Fang and pass. And then next turn I could play a Gatekeeper or fire off some removal spells. So playing Gale Fang and then bouncing might have worked out slightly better. Also might have to keep an answer in hand for the 6-7. Take down with a uh, six powered creature is not quite enough. Okay, so this turn probably just gatekeeper and pass. Don't want to trade. And next turn we can fire off some removal to set up an attack. Angel pack, three three and one one that cannot block. Okay. So, if I were to attack, I guess we have to worry about potential one mana trick like the a royal roll token and hexproof. They are still blocking my 4 4 profitably. So, I might want to take down the Outrider, attack, and keep up Candy Grapple basically. Now I could let this trade happen, killing Edgewall Pack, that way I keep Candy Grapple as an answer to Vanguard. Because if I just kill one of their blockers now, and next turn they go land Vanguard, then I don't have a great attack into it. If they double block, shrink this down to a 1-2. Yeah, that's still a good attack. So I think we just line it up like this. And then return 
one one token and probably get a swamp over food. And there's a six seven. And our boys attacking. Just to land the draw. So kind of like attacking all out now. Take seven. So now Gatekeeper could be lethal. Hopefully we'll force them to keep Vanguard back. And hope to top deck some more nice curve toppers here. Spear Guard is annoying since that can trump our Gatekeeper pretty easily. Eight, nine, down to eight. Yeah, I guess that happens. They still need to produce another blocker, otherwise they're dead to grapple on spear guard. That makes a one one. All right, that should do it. If there's no interaction, that is. Bounce, kill, spear guard, attack. Can leave one one token back just in case. Oof, they had a leaping ambush. That's rough. Alright, close one here. Came down to the last combo trick. Couldn't quite get the uh, distance, but uh, I'll still take it. That's gonna do it for today's gameplay. I wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.